Okay, so I just found out something really interesting. I'm super interested in the origin of martial arts, and Lindsay just blew my mind with some super interesting details <laughs> about the original names of several martial arts mm -hmm. systems. So we, we were talking about a few things. One, how one of the most famous uh -huh. Japanese karate styles is made by Masoyama, a Korean guy, uh -huh. right? And we got so stuck in like this, the nationalism behind martial yeah. arts. But it's, it's, it's way different than what you might think if you don't know the history. So uh, let's talk about Bagua for a minute. Uh, Bagua, uh, at first, uh, Dong Hai Zhang, who made uh, Bagua, this guy uh, called his martial arts uh, uh, walking and turning palm. Then his student changed to Bagua Zhang. Uh, it's uh, this name is from Taoist. Yeah, the just, eight trigrams palm style. Uh, and it sounds like uh, yeah, s sounds cool. So they changed this name. Yeah, the trigram then, is like the the Taoist symbol. You see it on the Korean flag, for example. Those lines. Uh, yes, yes, it's yes, got yes, symbolism and something in, like that. Yes, in that philosophy religion. Mm. So, uh, so why did they do that? Just sounds like better. <laughs> if, if someone say just walking in and turning palm, uh, so many people, uh, this is not special. But if if uh, someone changed this name to the Park uh Sandra like really mystical. Yeah. So his student changed to the, uh, uh, changed to the Park Wajan. So basically, they they did that thing that a lot of a lot of American martial arts schools did back in the eighties and the nineties where they would give it a mystical sounding Asian name. Now it already had an Asian name, but obviously in China, everybody speaks Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. And so it sounds normal, right? So you want to give it a more interesting name for brand recognition. What, what about uh, Taiji? Uh, Taiji, uh, original, uh, Taiji's original name was uh, one, uh, soft fist. Soft fist in Chinese, uh, uh, Ro uh, in Ro and uh, some, of, some of their name is a uh, cotton fist or cotton kung fu. Uh, uh, yeah. In Chinese, it's nian quan. Yeah, basically soft style of fighting. But by soft, it's it's uh, ro, the same word that we use for ro shu or ro dao, judo and jujitsu. Yes, right? yes. And that that can be translated a number of ways: soft, yielding, like yielding to force or power instead of resisting it. So essentially, it's. Would you say Tai Chi is similar to, to Jiu Jitsu in that way? Similar. Yeah. Obviously, the techniques are different. The syllabus of movement is different, but the philosophy behind it. I don't think so. Hmm. Ordinary Jiu Jitsu is uh, mostly depend on throwing and uh, throwing and uh, uh, submission. Hmm. Then Tai Chi, uh, there's an almost no throwing. Mm. They are only, uh, yeah, they, they have throwing, but very, very few. And they're only pushing and, and uh, changing the position and uh, striking. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Much more, much more. Yeah. Yeah. So, karate. Mm -hmm. So, you're from Japan. Every time you're on my channel, people think you're Chinese for some reason. But uh, you're from Japan, the, uh, the land of karate. Uh -huh. Right. And well, karate came from Okinawa originally, uh -huh. spread out to Japan and then spread across the world. Uh -huh. What was the original name of karate? Ah, karate, uh, maybe uh, so there are some names. Uh, uh, karate, the karate's uh, word uh, is actually means China. China uh, is Tang Dynasty. Yeah. It means Tang. It's the same, same word, uh, same calligraphy. Then, uh, then uh, tan hand. Yeah. So so uh, the karate was tan hand. Uh, uh, Chinese Chinese hand. hand. Chinese hand. Chinese hand. So uh, maybe uh, eighty years ago, uh, maybe eighty or ninety years ago, uh, Japanese people uh, don't want to have this name. Uh, then changed to uh, kara. Uh, uh, this means it's uh, empty. Empty right. or, or, or sky or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then changed to now uh, karate. Yeah. Essentially, they, they wanted to make it seem more Japanese and less Chinese, right? Yes, yes, yes. How can you be excited about your national martial art if it's called another nation's martial mm -hmm. art, right? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Then there, there is a, 
uh, kendo. Kendo is weapon. Uh, judo is uh, throwing uh, and submission. And there is no specific uh, striking martial arts. Then uh, Japanese government put the karate uh, into the striking. Hmm. Striking yeah, section. That's true. Because if you look at the forms, a huge percentage of the movements from the kata mm -hmm. are not punching and kicking. And that's obvious if you just look at them. There's all these open-handed movements, all of these shadow mm -hmm. wrestling type of movements, hand fighting, mm -hmm. and so on, that have nothing to do with punching and kicking. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the sport, it's all punching and kicking. Yeah. Right? If you look at Korean martial arts, uh, we've got Taekwondo, we've got Tung Su Do. Mm -hmm. What does Tung Su Do mean? That's Korean for Tung Shou Dao in Chinese, mm -hmm. or the original name of karate, To Te Do, mm -hmm. the way of the Chinese or Tang Dynasty hand. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact name. It's now considered a different martial art, mm -hmm. even though it's really just rebranded Shotokan Karate. Mm -hmm. Because back then, I believe, um, when was this? 1950s? Mm -hmm. um, somewhere around there where they officially changed the name. But in Korea yeah, at the yeah. time, they still used the old name mm -hmm. for karate. Tong Su Do. Mm -hmm. Tong Shou Dao. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so they still use it today. Mm -hmm. But a lot yeah. of people who practice Tong Su Do have no idea mm -hmm. that it actually means karate. Yeah. Then what's mean of the do? Yeah, let's uh, karate talk about do, uh, ken do, judo. Do means actually stick with right wing. This is what blew my mind. Yeah, in, in maybe two hundred times every martial arts in Japan, uh, kendo is not kendo. They call kenjutsu. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is a folk martial arts in Japan. Uh, folk, sword fighting, basically. Sword fighting. Uh, yeah, kenjutsu. Then. Uh, Judo was Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu, exactly like as a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. and uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, originally, uh, originally Jigoro Kano's yeah. art was just uh, called Jiu-Jitsu no, 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 Kano no. Jiu-Jitsu. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. you understand. Then uh, some people stick with government, uh, stick with, uh, uh, stick with uh, right-wing people. Uh, they made a competition. They don't, uh, they don't want to... Uh, take a new name, so they changed uh, jutsu uh, from jutsu to do. So now we call uh, kendo, judo. Uh, they, do, so do means actually stick with some uh, right wing people. So essentially, the name change was uh, politically motivated. Yes, yes. That's what blew my mind. Like it's it's a right wing name as opposed to like. A so, so it's like jutsu, yeah, and, does that and, have more and, of a left-wing connotation? Uh, what, what? Does jutsu, like jujitsu, have more of a left-wing connotation than judo? Like why, why, why the push to change the name? Like what, what because is it because uh, if you change the name, uh, the right-wing people uh, give them some uh, subside, the money. If you change, oh, okay. the, change your master's name from jutsu to do, uh, I, I, I give you some uh, help. <laughs> oh, okay, I have okay. some money. So now, for, instance, a... for instance, uh, Aikido was Aiki Jujutsu. Mm, this is true. Uh, Jujutsu. But uh, why they changed to Aikido? Because they took the right wing people's money. <laughs> <laughs> so Do is like a word that, that um, semantically resonates more with the right wing. And there are, this is true in like every language, I think. I was having a discussion with my sister over the summer. I, I visited the U.S. and I, I grew up in a small farming town. Most people are very right-leaning politically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a big issue over water rights mm -hmm. in my hometown right now mm -hmm. because everybody's a farmer. People, people um, they draw water out of a well from the earth and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a big push to get people to give up their water rights. Mm -hmm. When you say that to a right-leaning person, give up my rights, this is America, we'll never give up our rights. <laughs> it sounds like the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. If you rephrase that and rebrand that as mm -hmm. smart politicians do to try to get their way to water conservation, mm -hmm. suddenly everybody's like, well, of course I want to conserve water. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I imagine it's probably a similar thing between Jitsu and Do, although yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm ignorant of the history yeah. of politics in Japan. So if you change the na name, uh, name Jutsu to, to Do, uh, we have a, you, you can get a big dojo, Korean big dojo, yeah. <laughs> in the center of the city. <laughs> wow, wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> politically motivated. But yeah, this, this happens all the time. Do you remember back in the 80s, if you're from America, back in the 80s and early 90s, there was this big push to rebrand whatever your martial arts school was as, as some kind of esoteric, Asian-sounding, mm -hmm. mystical-sounding. The more mystical, the more Asian, the better. Mm -hmm. right? If you made a martial arts movie, it had to, it had to sound Asian, mystical, and and foreign and exotic. Otherwise, uh, who cares, right? But uh, Kyokushin uh, is still karate though, but they are not stick with uh, right-wing people. Okay. Uh, and uh, because, uh, yeah, he named uh, karate though because uh, karate do after the karate do this name is prevailed in Japan, then okay. they, they want to use the karate do. Hmm. Be because, uh, uh, Oyama Mastatsu, he is a Korean, so, yeah. so, so they, they can't even stick with the right-wing people. Huh. So, so they kept the karate do, the do suffix, because of um, marketing purposes for Yeah, I, I think so. Even though, like, Masoyama was not a right-leaning person? Yes. Interesting. And, and Ji Kun Do... Uh, know your it, audience. And Ji Kun Do is, uh, yeah, yeah, is same do. In, in the writing, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, Bruce Reed uh, d doesn't know about this. <laughs> yeah, so I believe Jeet Kune Do is, um, that's Cantonese, right? Cantonese, yeah. But, do, but in, 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 in Cantonese uh, is Dao in Chinese, uh, right? Yeah, in, in Chinese, uh, Just means it's way. A, a Jie Chuan Dao. Dao. Jie Chuan Dao, yeah. Do. It's the same Dao. I guess that because uh, the Dao uh, this word is prepared for, to the world, so, so Bruce Lee want to use it though. Yeah. This, this, on a side note, this is something that's very different between China and America. In America, we try to use the original Asian name of the martial art. Mm -hmm. In China, they always translate it to Chinese. So instead of saying karate for karate, they say kong shou dao, the Chinese mm -hmm. name of uh, karate. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny, they don't say Tang Shou Dao, mm -hmm. the original Chinese hand way, they say Kung Shou Dao, the, uh, mm -hmm. the Chinese version of Karate, empty hand way. Hmm. Mm. That kind of surprises me now that I say it out loud. Yeah. Well, any other secret origins of martial arts names you can think of? Uh, oh, I thought of one. Not, oh, yeah, yeah. MMA. MMA was not originally called MMA. A lot of people don't know. Younger kids don't know this. They think it was always mixed martial arts. It wasn't. Originally, people called it, well, in Brazil, they called it vale tudo, which means ah, anything yeah, yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. Anything goes. Everything's valid, mm -hmm. right? Um, in America, they originally called it NHB or no holds barred. That's a mm -hmm. catch wrestling term. Mm -hmm. No holds. A hold is a submission, mm -hmm. a submission hold. No holds barred means you can do any submission hold you want. Neck cranks are okay, chokes are okay, arm bars are okay. Um, when I started competing in MMA, they didn't call it MMA. We, we called it No Holds Barred or NHP. Mm -hmm. And then some people also called it cage fighting, of course, because it usually took place mm -hmm. in a cage. And it wasn't until like after the year 2000, uh, John McCarthy, the referee, he was responsible for the name change. And it's a funny story because he was the representative from the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. Mm -hmm or Athletic Control Board, those are the guys who wrote the UFC rules back in the year 2000. And he was filling out the paperwork, and the paperwork said, what sport are you applying for? And he wrote martial arts, because it's a martial arts competition. And they asked him, what kind of martial arts? And he didn't know what else to say, so he wrote, mixed martial arts. Oh. He just made it up off the top of his head. Now, it's not the first instance of the term mixed martial arts being used in English, but it's the first time that it was used to describe a specific sport. Mm -hmm. So that's where the term came from. 
But actually, 200 years ago, almost the martial arts was mixed. Yes. They, they, they are striking and uh, some grappling and some crossing and yeah. some even have some weapon. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it was always, uh, always mixed. Uh, I, I guess that 200 years ago, almost no uh, one uh, ran only a bear hunt technique. Uh, they, they ran a little bit uh, weapon. Then, uh, then train the bear hunt at the same time. They train at the same time. Yeah. But nowadays it's, it's, it's very separated. If you want evidence of this, look no further than the forms of any traditional martial mm -hmm. art. Again, a small percentage of what we see in the forms is punching and kicking. All the other fancy looking movements, that's not punching and kicking. That's grappling, that's hand fighting, that's weapons, that's, that's all of that other stuff that isn't striking. Mm -hmm. There was a story, just one other tangent that I read from an old uh, American pioneer journal. This guy was traveling out west back in the 1800s and he met a, um, a tribe of Native Americans and he got in a fight with one of them. And this Native guy, he would kick and he would wrestle. And when the, the American settler punched the Native guy in the face, everybody was shocked because they they'd never punched before mm -hmm. because when they went to war they carried weapons in their hands they didn't punch each other they they took an axe or a club or or whatever weapon and tried to murder each other with them mm -hmm. i mean this is a crappy weapon unless it's all you have if you have as much as a stick in your hand that's a superior weapon so yeah fist fighting is very rare in the indigenous martial arts of the world in fact, we only see it in a very few styles, percentage-wise. Mm. Anyway, that's a fun little rant. Linji, thanks for the history lesson. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Now Thanks get out there and train.